Man, it's been a lot of stuff going on over the past few days. We've been getting builder info. We've had community day where we got more info. It's been tons of stuff going on on Twitter. Mike Wayne's been tweeting a bunch of stuff, a bunch of different devs, and it's been a lot of information, man. And I'm here to talk about the builder. Now I'm gonna break down the builder for y'all and everything that y'all need to know to make y'all builds for NBA 2K24. Now, of course, as we learn more about the builder and more about the game, I will be telling y'all that information. But as far as everything that we've been told, I've compiled a list of things that y'all will need to know going into 2K24 based off of what we already have. And listen, man, because this is very important when you make your build. Before I get into anything, I said it once and I'm gonna say it again. Strength will be important this year. 2K has said it. Other creators have said it, especially for big man builds. Strength will be important. And I said that they will bring Bully back and they brought it back with the Bulldozer badge. Even 2K themselves said that this is Bully 2.0. So I'm going to show y'all what new badges that they put into the game later. When we get to that point, read the Bulldozer badge because that is the new Bully badge. And I'm telling you, you will want to make your build with strength because it's going to be shown on the defensive side of things, especially and it's also gonna be shown on the offensive side. So strength is gonna be important on defense. If you're trying to get them body up animations and you're trying to be a really good lock, strength will be important for that. Couple housekeeping notes real quick, the embargo dates. So August 30th and September 1st, those are some important dates. We'll get to see some videos about gameplay. I'll be dropping a video for y'all when I get more information on that stuff. Creators are able to talk more about quick play and Mamba moments. So we'll hear some more info about gameplay. And then on September 1st, they are able to talk about the my player builder and my career in the wreck so we'll be getting more information about that so be on the lookout for a video from me because i'll definitely be making videos on both of those things on those dates and of course man looking back at the rollout schedule we also have some more information coming to us this upcoming week the week of august 28th we got the most important things in the game we got my career get a first look at the city and then my team this is going to be the most exciting week of information coming up this week so make sure you got post notifications turned on because i will be dropping videos on all of this stuff that we'll be getting this week so let's go ahead and get into this builder man one of the first unique things about this builder so we already know 2k has been giving us the freedom to make our builds from scratch and make them how we want to there's no pie charts or anything like that anymore but now in 2k24 they have something called nba player templates and we can use an nba player template and customize that to make our build so we can either use it as is or we can use it as a template like i said and then kind of tweak it a little bit from there and with the nba player templates one cool thing is that you automatically automatically get the player sigs that that template has and they're equipped off rip at no cost so you don't have to go spend vc to get those sigs you got them off rip even at a 60 overall if you don't meet the requirements so you don't have to do anything now granted of course you'll want to upgrade your build attributes so you can do other things but you don't have to meet the requirements you can just be a 60 overall and you'll already have access to those sigs without spending vc so that's pretty dope now this stuff that i'm talking about these are only next gen features old gen 2k24 will get the 2k23 next gen builder so you know if it was a time for you to grab a next gen console it would be now so let's go ahead and start talking about the badges man because they've done some really great things with the badges so first of all we got a new badge system they've improved returning badges they've added new badges and then of course they've removed some badges so i'll talk about all of that here in a second so we got 24 new badges they did that in honor of kobe so here's a picture of the badges man i'm not going to sit up here and read each one right now i'll just show y'all what they are if you want to check them out each one individually i'll put a link down in the description for the course i report you can go check it out there but they've removed a lot of badges too so the ones that they've removed they removed limitless takeoff bully clamp breaker menace mismatch expert quick first step vice grip amped clutch shooter floor general and volume shooter now some of these badges that were removed they weren't technically removed removed they were just reworked into a completely new badge and with all the badges man they've got 77 badges across my team and my career so you know we got a lot of options and we got a lot of good stuff to pick from now with the badges they have been split into four tiers you know we had the tier system for 2k23 with tier one two and three they've kind of redid that tier system and we now have s tier a 
B and C tier with S being the best tier. So the tier system works hand in hand with the new batch progression system. So let me go ahead and dive right into that and then we'll go back to the tier system. So with the batch progression, man, they are really looking to create a bigger skill gap this year with the bills, man. There's no more meta bills. So listen to the batch progression. This new badge progression system is designed to fit your play style. So in games, badge levels are determined by badge usage. So how much they're popping off in game. So let me further explain that. So each game, your skill and usage with the badge increases towards the level that matches your play. So badges that you activate the most successfully will trend towards the higher levels with your potential. And the same goes for badges with less usage. They'll trend towards lower levels. So if you have giant slayer on for example but you're barely activating it it'll probably be a bronze or a silver badge depending upon how much you're using it i like this system because the badges actually fit your play style if you're somebody who's just a spot up or you're a popper but you got hall of fame posterizer on your bill and all you're doing is spotting up in the corner and setting pick and rolls and popping for threes that hall of fame posterizer is going to drop because it's not being used you have to actually use all the badges in your arsenal to keep it at whatever the highest level that they can go so you're not just going to be rocking the best of the best badges if they're not being used they will drop so with that if you drop a level you had on the badge, it can be regained. So an example of that would be Masher going from gold to silver, but you can get it back up to gold and it's done faster than you getting it to gold in the first place. So you'll have to work for every one of your badges. So with that Masher example, you're gonna start off at bronze and if you can get it to gold and that's the highest it'll go, once you get it to gold, if you drop it back after that, you can get it back up to gold, but it'll be faster this time when you try to get it back to gold. And then some badges don't work in games where they're unusable. So an example of this would be the Relay Passer badge. This badge is a hockey assist badge. Relay Passer provides a boost to shooters in a pass to assist situation. So you're not going to be in a pass to assist situation if you play in 2v2. So that badge is just not going to work. And with the badge level progression, you can now work on that in the Gatorade facility too. So you can go grind in the Gatorade facility and get badge progression and level up your badges. So I really like that feature, man. We already had that in the NBA team practice in the Brickley gym. And then with that also, you can only improve your badges in those areas. Like you can't drop a badge. So when you're playing against people out in the park and in the city, if you're playing and you're not activating a badge that much, or if you're playing bad, like your badge can lose progression like we talked about earlier. But when you're practicing in those different practice areas, Gatorade facility, team practice, Brickley gym, you can only get better. And they have different prizes and features to help you speed up your badge level progression. So one thing that they have is badge perks. And the badge perks are prizes that provide various benefits to the progression of individual badges. So they'll either help speed up your badge level progression or they'll help them and slow it down a little bit so they don't regress as fast. And each perk has four slots that you can use on different badges but a badge can only have one badge perk apply at a time so i'll throw them up on screen so y'all can read what it is you can pause it i don't want to sit here and read through each one but they just know that they help speed up your badge level progression or they help slow it down a little bit in terms of badge regression so they don't drop down a level as fast they got another prize called performance multipliers and with these, they provide benefits to all your badges at once, not just an individual badge, as long as you meet the challenge requirements in the respective modes. So they got the NBA, City, Rec, and Pro-Am. So you complete those challenges, you get the performance multiplier, and then they got some different ones here. Again, I'll put them up on screen so y'all can read through, pause the video so you can see it. And then with this new badge system, they've also got something called floor setters that they've implemented. So a floor setter is a prize that's earned through season XP. They prevent a badge from dropping below the listed level. So let's say you have fearless finisher on gold. If you use a floor setter on it, it can't drop below gold. With the floor setters, you got 18 slots. You got nine silver slots and you got nine gold slots. So, you know, whatever badges you use for the gold slots, they won't drop below gold. And then whatever badges you choose for the silver slots, they won't ever drop below silver these are permanent and they cannot be changed so make sure you choose your badges wisely and which ones you want to put there and then let's say one of the gold badges you chose can go to hall of fame it'll still be able to go to hall of fame so just because you got it in the gold slot it won't be prevented from going past gold to hall of fame you'll still be able to put it on hall of fame it just won't ever go below gold 
And then y'all don't have to worry about this because they're included in the free base pass each season. If you didn't know, 2K has a different like seasonal passes that you can get, but the floor setters are with the free base pass. So you'll be good. So next thing with the badge system, man, we got less attributes that are tethered together, but they are now tethered to the badges. So to get gold clamps, you need a 60 acceleration. And then that, that's just one of the requirements. We still got to wait to see what all the other attribute requirements are, but that's one of the ones that we know from one of the images we've seen in the builder. Now, let me back up a little bit and go back to the tier system. So like I said earlier, man, the C tier is the lowest tier. These will be the badges that are easier to gain and the easiest to keep. Each badge tier is harder to gain and quicker to lose. So whatever badges you're trying to get on Hall of Fame, these will be the most difficult ones to get and then the fastest ones you can lose. So make sure when you build your build out and you're trying to see what badges you're going to get, man, make sure the Hall of Fame badges is ones that you know you're going to activate and that'll fit your play style because if it's going to be a difficult badge that's hard for you to activate you're not going to keep it on hall of fame for long or it may be super hard for you to even get it up to hall of fame this new system creates another skill gap everyone has access to top tier badges but you have to show that you can continuously use them with your play improve your skills it's like irl you'll excel in the areas of your game you work on the most and then with this new system it's like role players are back and with the role players, something that they said was they'll likely have fewer badges, but they'll be at higher levels. Unlike anyone that's trying to create a more well-rounded build that dabbles in a bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard to try to keep all of them badges at the max level. And you're not going to be able to get all of them badges at like Hall of Fame or something. So, you know, just get that idea out of here. So more stuff about the builder, man. We kind of talked about badges the tier system and all that we no longer get to choose our takeover when we make our builds so once we get in the game we get to choose what category we want boosted in real time so you'll be playing a park game takeover meter will be activated and you get to choose which category you want the boost to apply to so finishing shooting playmaking defense slash rebounding and or physicals and whichever one you choose they'll get plus 10 to each attribute in that category so that's how takeovers is going to work for 2k24 so for archetypes in the builder man the community put an emphasis on preventing meta builds and that's exactly what 2k set out to do the community wanted more diversity tired of everybody rocking six ones and six eights and six nines we wanted people to have unique builds that were unique to them and their play style and just we wanted to have more than one build be versatile you know what i'm saying so there was a huge overhaul with the attribute caps for various size combinations they did the max height and the weight were updated per position and then there also was an emphasis on the build names to get better names that are descriptive of the player as possible so you know they worked on that we got better build names to go along with everything so you know that's a good chunk of all of the information that we know about the builder so far the new badge system the new tier system so let me know what y'all think man do y'all like this concept of having to work for your badge to keep it once you get that hall of fame badge you gotta you gotta work to keep it at hall of fame or it can drop and then one thing that i thought was unique about 2k's closing statement about the builder i'm gonna just read it for y'all real quick they said the enhanced my player builder and new badge system are designed to eliminate meta badge builds and make way for unique styles of gameplay there's more than one way to become a dominant player and it's up to you to determine how you'll thrive on the court so i thought that was a cool closing statement man for 24 find your lane there's no more meta builds find out what area of your game is the best and, and make a build to cater to that you know what i'm saying don't try to just copy somebody's build i said in all my build videos man use build videos as templates don't go on youtube and copy the first build video that you see that has a bunch of views because let me tell you another video can come out and that build can be just as better than that one and then you would have wasted all of your vc so use build videos as templates i make build videos use my build videos as templates i'm not telling you that you have to go out and create my same exact build no because you may find something that i didn't so use them as templates mess around in the builder do not create a build day one and go straight to the park and spend your money man play around in the builder for a minute find a build that works for you even when you think you found a build try something else because you may find something different but from what everyone's saying at community day the builder is very strict so you know we already know metas is out the window so you'll have to be really creative you have to pay attention to what all you want your build to do i say 
make a role player, man. I feel like role players are really going to thrive this year. Bigs are going to thrive. The paint defense is better. Defense is better in general. And we got some fire new badges, man. I'm excited. I'm ready to get my hands on the game. We a couple weeks out and I'm ready to roll, man. Let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on the builder. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and sub up to the channel. Make sure you got post notifications turned on because we got an exciting week this week, man. As always, be sure to stay safe out here and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.